this morning. Our Kate Garraway's documentary about caring for her late husband, Derek, got everyone talking this week and, yeah, you know, no, obviously didn't. shining a light on unpaid carers because one in five women aged between 55 and 59 in this country are not paid for looking after their loved ones. They do it out of love, but the demands are pushing so many to the brink. Well, Dr. Hilary and Dr. Amir are here. Um, Hilary, this is made, this is what Kate wanted, this is what Derek wanted. We started a conversation now. We're actually starting to realise just how important carers are. You know, we we know they are, yeah, but it's absolutely. it's good to reflect on it, isn't it? They, they do a remarkable job and they're underappreciated and yes. underpaid, for sure. And, and what Kate's programme uh, revealed was just how challenging it can be emotionally, physically, practically and financially to look mm. after somebody like Derek um, uh, in his last year of life. And, and that could have persisted for many, many years sure. on. So Kate was not to know and she was getting into debts, even though she's on a, a, a decent salary, as she said. So it shone a light on the plight of people who need caring and carers themselves. We've got something like the unpaid carers are saving the NHS something like £162 billion, which is almost the same as the entire what? NHS budget. That's crazy. Now, yeah, you'd expect families to look after family members if they're poorly, but if you're working as well and you're still getting into debt, you miss out on some of the benefits that you might otherwise get. Yeah, of course. And are the benefits enough? That begs the question. Well, that, that is the thing, because, you know, obviously, Amir, this sadly seems to affect mainly women, um, because women are doing most of the heavy lifting, not all of it, I would have to say, but, but mainly they are. And it's made really incredibly difficult. It's almost as if they don't, I wouldn't like to say they're doing it deliberately, obviously, but they make it so hard for people to get what they're entitled to. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Lorraine. As you said earlier, women aged 55 to 59 provide the most care, unpaid care in this country. And many of them are juggling dependent children as well. That's that's 20 percent of that that age group. And actually, these care patterns are reinforced by social and economic structures that reflect gender stereotype for carers, framing women as these primary caregivers, not just for children, but for elderly relatives and for adults with disabilities, their loved ones with disabilities. And if we want women to have an equal shot at work and life in general, we need better access to childcare, we need more flexible understanding work-based patterns, and we need equality when it comes to sharing out caregiving roles. But more importantly, we need financial support for all unpaid carers. No, definitely. I mean, Hilary, it is there, but the system makes it incredibly difficult for you to, to you know, someone like Kate, who is a terrier, as we know, and mm. an incredible journalist, and mm. she found it difficult to navigate this Byzantium system. Uh, you know, what, what hope absolutely. is there for everyone else? No, absolutely right. So it's very bureaucratic. So uh, the budgets are allocated by local councils. It's not a nation, national budget. So right. you go to your local council and you, first of all, you ask for a, an assessment, a, a needs assessment. So mm. somebody comes to see the person at home and what do they need? Do they need something night and day? How many hours? You know, it do they need equipment? Mm. Uh, are they eligible for a day centre? Are, are they eligible? Is the carer eligible for respite care? What's their financial status? Yeah. It's very complex, very complicated. The form filling is is very arduous. But basically, I mean, there are two simple um, financial okay. uh, assistance that you can get. Carers allowance. You get seventy six pounds seventy five a week if you care for someone at least thirty five hours a week if they're on certain benefits. Okay. If you live in Scotland and get a carer's allowance, you might also get a carer's allowance supplement paid twice a year. Um, there's also attendance allowance. This is £68.10 or £101.75 a week to help with personal support if you're both physically and mentally disabled and state, uh, and you're on state pension age, you're at that age, yeah. or older. Okay. So there are two basic benefits. There are additional benefits if you fulfil certain eligibility criteria. It's very complex. It is really and you have to push, push, push. What I would say, because my mother was, you know, very dependent on her excellent I carers know, recently and until she died, they, they just do such a phenomenal job. And sometimes, you know, they, they, are, they are paid almost no more than a minimum wage and then they have to go from one patient to the next and the time in between is wasted. They don't get paid for that. They don't get paid for the travelling time. 
they need a union, you know, and, yeah. and, and we need our society behind them to push for a, a better we deal. Need, yeah, we do. We just need to value people who are doing that, you know, whether it's uh, whether it's unpaid, you know, because you're looking after your husband, your partner, your son, daughter, whatever it may be. Um, Amir, the paperwork is obviously daunting. Do we know if anything is going to change to make that easier? I mean, what, you know, what, what would actually help, do you think? The paperwork is incredibly daunting. I hear this from my patients all the time. They, they're, they're faced with these almost books that they have to fill out. And the detail required is just incredible. And these carers are wor sometimes working, they've got children as well, or they're just exhausting from caring duties. And then to go and have to fill out these detail forms is incredibly hard. And I sometimes help my patients with it. And I find them really hard as yeah. well to fill out. But my top tips really for filling out these forms, I've got three top tips. The first one is when you're describing your loved one's caring needs, describe them on their worst possible day. A lot of illnesses fluctuate and have good days and bad days, but describe what they need on their bad days and what they can't do on those days. Number two, I see this all the time. Care financial support um, applications get rejected on the first or second attempt. Appeal, appeal, appeal. In most cases that I've seen, it's the appeals which get accepted rather than the first application. It's not right, but it's the way it is. That, and thirdly, it... if your loved one is entering the last few months of their illness and their life, you can get fast tracked for certain benefits. Don't wait for the last few weeks or the last few days. Speak to either the district nurse, the GP or the palliative care team and they will fast track you to those financial services. And if you're really struggling with filling out forms like so many people are, there's somebody, a healthcare professional called a social prescriber who is attached to most GP surgeries. You don't have to see a doctor to get referred to them and they can help you fill out those forms. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Amir and, and Hilary. And you know what? Make sure that you take care of yourself as well. Yeah, really You've got important. to look after yourself too. You need to take some time off. If, if you have to try, ask for friends to come and sit with the person uh, so that you can take some time out, get your hair done, go shopping, uh, take a day out, spa day if you can afford it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just Anything. But five you know, you, you, there is an association between mental ill health and being a carer and looking after children as well, juggling work. So look after yourself because, you know, yeah. if you're not healthy, then you can't look after the person you're looking after. Fantastic. Thank you, Hilary. Thank you very much indeed. And um, hopefully, hopefully um, the government will listen and they will take some action. Yep. We hope. Yep. Thank you.